Okay, welcome everybody in the chat. Now let's take a look at your channel submissions. Let's dive right into it. Let me switch the screen for you. And over here, I have G1 Swerve Productions. This is a channel about Transformers and you do L Transformers stop motion videos. That's what you said on your channel submissions. Oh, by the way, before I forget, you can submit your channel on my website. When you go to socialvideoplaza.com, this is the front page. And then when I scroll down over here, you can request a channel review. And everybody that I review today has checked this checkbox that you have original content and that that your content doesn't infringe copyright. So I have the uh, you gave me permission to use it for a a review on this channel. Okay, let me go back to SG Swerve Productions. You have you do stop motion videos. The thing that strikes me the most is you do very short stop motion and I know that stop mo making stop motion videos is a lot of work because you have to do every single frame in the video let me click on one okay you start with something that is of no value to the viewer and you ask them to subscribe. If you deliver the content and then ask viewers to subscribe, then it makes much more sense because then viewers are able to, to know what they subscribe to and you want them to subscribe because they like your content and you don't want them to subscribe because you told them so. I'm going to play this video real quick. This is a really short video. With stop motion, you have to make sure that something is moving in the image. Uh, not only stop motion, YouTube videos in general, but the, the motions are pretty jerky. And that is the hard thing about doing stop motion, is making the motion. And that is, I've experienced with stop motion uh, a couple of times in my life. And I noticed the hardest thing is to get a feel for the rhythm of when you do stop motion, how that works out in real life when you play it on full speed. Because if you do two little frames in a second, it looks jerky and it will only get fluent when you add 20, let's say 25 frames in a second. And yes, that's a lot of work. What I also noticed is, again, that's the skill of making stop motion videos there is something changing in the background and I think probably someone walked by here and bumped into the pillows that makes it less convincing the stop motion second thing that I think that will help your stop motion a lot is have a storyline here now okay something is happening but we want to convey an emotion to our viewer because that is what that is the value that you give to viewers that is what people come for in a video and now that is really hard Second video, okay. Same over here, try to increase the amount of frames in your image. It helps maybe to have a little bit of a background. Yes, I looked at some sites some sites, some other YouTube channels to see a little bit what your competition is. And that is a super tip. Look at what your competition does so you, so you have a little bit of an idea what you have to fight, fight against. 
for example, this stop motion here, I looked at it real quick. It is much more fluent and there is much more environment going on. So that would be my tip for you here is, is there something that you can do with uh, not a lot of, uh, not a lot of things to have a little bit of a background, a grass under layer or some rocks in the background. Maybe you can print something out that you can find on the internet that works as a background. But there are, uh, I think in the toy store, probably grass mats or so that you can lay out on the floor that makes it a little bit more, more realistic. Also, when I look at your thumbnails, for example, they represent your content, but I see a transformer over here and then transformers stop motion. But what, when I look at, for example, what your competition does, Optimus Prime, Bubble Bee, Sandstorm, Racing, Car, Mud, Transformer, Stop Motion, Action. So people know better what they are getting into when they click on the on the thumbnail. In the first place, they see this, but also this tells a little bit of a story what is going on. Transformers Generation, Movie Stop Motion. Okay, I don't think that these titles are very strong. 14 million views six years ago, that is a lot. That is a lot. Oh. The reason why I say that it isn't really competitive is because when you look at some videos in, in other niches, for example, these titles are not super strong. And you can outrank that if you are if you are a little bit handy with titles, you can purely outrank people just by, by having a, a click-worthy title. But making thumbnails is really hard. Okay, let me draw. Oh, yeah, let's draw. Oh, come on. Can you see that this is more enticing to click because there's some action going on? Also here, the background. And when I look at your channel banner, I would say, yes, it conveys something with, uh, with Transformers, but can you make it, what, what is your unique value proposition that you bring to the table that others don't? What makes your Transformer animation so unique? And when do you do release new content? These are a month ago, two weeks ago, two weeks ago, one week ago. It helps to release content consistently. So not having, for example, I'm not saying that you don't do that, but uh, it helps that you have every week, for example, a video or every two weeks, for example. And viewers know what to expect and know uh, when to expect new content. And it is absolutely no, um, there's nothing bad about making your thumbnails in Photoshop. Um, a lot of people do that. A lot of people do that. And yes, a lot of thumbnails are faked. But that doesn't matter if that gets the click and if viewers are satisfied with your video and get what they came for. Uki! Uh, G1 Swerve Productions. I hope that helps. I hope that helps. Let me take a look at the next one for you. I saw you in the chat, Sam. Let's take a look at your Lego channel. I see that you worked a lot on your thumbnails and they are so much better than what they were before. And I have to compliment you on this one. This thumbnail right here, because first you do something here, your face is in the thumbnail, and you convey a little story here. The displays are bad, and you, you don't need that. And that is really good. And try to see if you can uh, do that also in, in more videos, like here or here. I see you do also uh, uh, stop motion. 
and you had the dancing dragon on your channel you removed that and now it's back again also for you when it comes to stop motion try to see if you can work a little bit on your story and it helps to script out your videos so before you make a stop motion think about the story you want to tell and there is a small story here but is that a story with a story arc and i i get that this is hard this is super hard but that's the that's the sport and that's the challenge of of doing stop motion having that for example the story here and make your animations less jerky and again the way you make it less jerky is by having more frames in the in the video per second okay but there is a little story arc here i think if you want to to succeed with these kind of stop motions uh, it the that story needs to be a little bit more there le needs to be a little bit more tension in here for example storytelling is about solving a problem um you have uh, the layout of a of a uh, the, what is happening right now um, for example uh, a james bond and he walks on the beach and nothing is happening uh, uh, at that part then there is a problem and you see a dude that is uh, destroying the earth with a super mega laser that's the problem and then bond goes after the villain to destroy that super laser and that's the problem and he solves that problem by destroying the laser and then the bond video is over and that the same is happening for youtube videos but uh, especially stop motion because you are basically telling a story here and that's the easy part of let's say tutorials because tutorials are really simple there is almost if you're new, not doing something weird but there's always some kind of storyline there You begin with something, then you build up, build up, build up, build up, build up. And for example, your 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 Lego tutorial. There is nothing here, um, and then you build something, and the end result is the end result of of the build. And that's a super small storyline. But that's a challenge f because you can't do that in st in stop motion. You need to tell a a uh, a story. What I noticed is there is a lot of shadow happening here in the background and i get that that is you again one of those challenges of stop motion is uh, lighting you need to have artificial lighting because the lighting of the sun when there goes a clown f for the sun then that lighting changes and that is not something that works for stop motion so try and that's that's why i have my curtains etc closed because i have a really simple webcam over here and that webcam that doesn't w work really well with uh, with change in in, uh, in 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 brightness, and the same is for, for uh, happens for stop motion because otherwise your your image is overexposed. But that's not the that's not the problem here. What I would recommend you to do is to shoot on a tripod because I can see the image is moving all over the place. And if you do something with stop motion, you have now one shot from one angle, but try to see if you can have different angles. For example, you see the guy in the hot dog stand giving the, is there a guy in the hot dog stand? I don't know, but that the dude over here that takes, that takes the hot dog from the hot dog stand. And if you, if you film this from this angle, for example, that part, and then you cut back to this part of the animation, and then the car drives by and you film it from this angle, it makes the, the image much more visually appealing. Again, try to see if you can find some Lego stop motion uh, channels on the internet. I saw some stop motion when I researched your channel, but I can't find them here. But 
try to see what your what your competition does because that is what you're what you're up against. Do you want people to click on your video instead of the instead of the competition? So let's talk about thumbnails, which are absolutely ten times better than what you uh, what you did before. But when I look at this title, for example, Lego Hot Noodle Dog. Okay, but what makes it that people want to click on that video compared to another Lego stop motion video? Is there something weird happening or what's the event in the video that people come for? That's really hard. I know, I, I know absolutely that is hard, uh, but that, <laughs> that's the sport of being a YouTuber, convincing people to click. Lego tower uh, measurement. I looked at that video and you literally measure a Lego tower. Okay, but what is happening in the video that people come for? What what is the thing that they can't sleep without when they have that they need to watch this this video otherwise they can't sleep tonight. And measuring a tower, I think that the 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 tension the attention span is too little for viewers to uh, first of all to to want to watch that because every no, that's it. You need to be some something unique, and everybody can build a tower and measure that. But what makes your tower so unique? Is it a tower that is... This would be a fun topic when this tower was so big that it almost fell over. And then you show, first of all, you show that tower and that it's almost tipping over or that it reaches the ceiling of your, uh, of your room, for example. And then you're going to measure it because that is something that people can't do at home. Or when they see that, when they see that thumbnail, that they think, I need to watch that. Now, for example, when this tower was super large and it reached the ceiling, then your thumbnail could have been something with your face, of course. <gasps> and then look at the at the tip of of that tower and then have a circle or an arrow that points at that tower it is so big it almost fell uh, falls over now i want to measure how many bricks can you stack that 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 could be that could be the title how many bricks can you stack before it falls over or how many four um eight dotted bricks can you stack before it falls over something like that because that is super unique and when people browse over, have that for example on their YouTube homepage, they need to click on that because they want to know, does the tower fall over? Or um, how many bricks does it take to blah, 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 something. Again, I'm, I'm thinking of the how many the um why are there so many black bulls floating on a lake in michigan or, or something like that with by veritasium you want to click on that video because you want to know why the freak are there black bulls on the lake and the video is interesting so i i can imagine that people will want to watch that uh, until the end and that video has millions of views okay sam i hope that helps you i hope that helps you let me take one video more Secret to applying Lego stickers. Um, I have watched this video, but I don't know if I watched this on a live stream. No, that I wanted to make a video about their channel, and this was one of the things I wanted to say. Um, Sam, you do something here that is not very unique or something special. Because you don't explain 
the secret of applying Lego stickers. And I get that that I I I think I even gave you the title. But now there it, it's not a secret you you apply a Lego sticker. But if you for example, the secret could be that you do that you dip the sticker in a water which may which makes applying a lot easier or you use a certain uh, kind of device because then it people get a secret and then they get a secret when they clicked on that on that video over here when i look at your thumbnail you have to convey something with the sticker and if you would have taken this shot for example and and there um let's say you, you you take you take this shot and over there you, you put that over here and then as a really small you uh you, you do the the question mark do you paint over that so people can't exactly see what you're doing but and uh, point to that for example or, or and, and then your face makes sense but now people don't get enough visual clues, not enough visual tension to click on that video. Sam, that's a lot. Does that help you? Does that help you? The art of making thumbnails. I want to make a video about that. Because it's it is incredibly hard. It is incredibly hard. But again, I, I see you I see you jump forwards. I see you jumping um uh, forwards with your thumbnails. Those are, uh, again um m my compliments for that. My compliments for that. Okay, let's uh, take a look at the... Um, no, before I go to the next uh, uh, submission. When I look, for example, at this LEGO channel, I can see something amazing that is built over here. When I looked at your, this, your display case... You tell me which bricks to use. The easiest way to do that is to flash that on the screen one second long and tell people that if they want to know which bricks you exactly used, that you or put it in the description or have a PDF or something that w which you can download or that they should screenshot it because this, um, yes, it is useful information for what you're going to do, but it doesn't... It, uh, I think that people click away before before they get into the actual meat of your content because your content starts here. And also for this video, you build something, but it is something that people could have built themselves at home and could have thought of at home. And when I looked at this, am, am I am I and ties to watch multiple of your videos and you want them to amaze them with something amazing because then they get they they you add something to their to their day and that's what they want to watch multiple of your videos and now you you build something but it is not so special that I think to myself, I have to make a, I have to watch that video. And you want to give that to people. And that takes a little bit of preparation. You you can't, uh, you can't go and uh, 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 just record a video and and not knowing what you're going to do. You have to think about before you record and i'm not saying that you don't do that just it's just an, an, uh, an overall remark you have to think ahead before you make a video and that goes into your script that goes into your uh, your titles your thumbnails because you can already think 
you already planned the video ahead this way, which makes your your uh, your your total video, including your title and thumbnail, much more stronger. Okay, um, let me take. Uh, there, there were other submissions. There were other submissions. Uh, Sam, uh, I I hope that helps. I know it's a lot. Uh, but that that is a, a little bit the fun of making uh, of making YouTube videos, figuring stuff out, figuring stuff out. Also, try to look at the thumbnails of this channel over here, um, because I think that might give you some ideas. I'm not saying that you should copy that. Okay, other channel, other channel, Resika. Rezika, it's French, it's French, it's French. Rezika, 75 subscribers with a video or 15 or so, that is really good, so congrats with that. What I'm a little bit, I'm doubting about what this channel is about in the sense of Am I going to get a? Uh, it's it's about fashion and sewing, and I I, I I saw your channel submission, but what makes me think? Um, what is your hint that you you give to people that 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 you tell them what this channel is about? And I I get here up here over here you have these these uh, I don't know the English word for that, but the the gare, that's the Dutch word. Over here, uh, indeed, that gives me a little hint. But you say here vlog, 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 and somewhere else was also vlog. The, oh yeah, vlog two, vlog one. I am expecting a vlog because the a, a typical vlog is someone filming his day and now i'm going to the shower i'm going to uh, eat my breakfast and you see me exactly step by step doing that but that's not what your videos is about are about you you talk a little bit about doing sewing but i'm not getting i'm not getting something out of this as a viewer if you would do tutorials, then I would understand because that's what people came for and they get value out of those videos. But now uh, you, you first communicate a blog, which is a little bit misleading for people. And then, yeah, you, you talk about doing something, but you're not explaining what people should do step by step. Your title over here is Mon Espace uh, Couture. Uh, which is uh, something my my uh, culture um, space. I get why this is appealing because people want to know what other people do and what equipment that you have, and you explain uh, something about that. So I get the value for people for this video. That is the same thing as with, for example. I want to see someone. Uh, I'm, I'm a retro video game fan, so I want to see someone's games uh, in a retro game room in a retro video game collection for a retro video game collection. Here you explain something, but I'm not getting enough value out of this video for me to watch multiple videos. And the easiest way to change this is to make tutorials. May showing people step by step how to do things and i hear you talk and i i know that you know what you're talking about i saw what you what you made uh, you know what you talk about what you what you talk about and that's that's really good so let's take a look at um, a video of here covid 19 kai van nu bitsin res kot nu i have no idea what that means um i don't think it's french either but that has little to do with sewing. And it helps to have one type of video on a channel because if people saw one video, then they will watch more if they like your content. Let's take a look at home. Oh, if you 
I have the ability to have multiple playlists over here, have multiple playlists over here. Did you have playlists? Yeah. The idea behind playlists is that you that you make a list for people to play. So make a list of people, four people, so they can watch a couple of videos in consecutive order. It is not a organization of your video collection, what a lot of people mistake it for. So have three to five top, top, max 10 videos, for example. But I get that that is a little bit hard. Uh, by the way, I like your personality and I think that that is your strong suit for these videos. Personally, I would like to have <laughs> to see your pretty face in the video a little bit more. And you have over here something that you show something to people what you do, but you don't really explain why you do what you do. And that makes it for a tutorial at least uh, not very super handy. If you do that, uh, how-to is a really popular uh, format to convey what, what people can do. How to saw, sew a dress, for example. Then people know what they get out of the video. Projects Couture, Sans Sac, Georges, Parteuse et Salopette. When I look at your thumbnails, your face over here is a little bit small. And I, I'm, I don't get, when I look purely look at the thumbnail and I don't know what, uh, what the title of the video is, I don't know what this is. Oh, but you unbox things. Okay, <laughs> that's the fun of unboxings, that you don't know what it is. But over here, it is really hard to make out what it exactly is. What you could do, for example, is make a thumbnail where you show um, uh, here the, uh, the, the end result, what you make, and here how you make it with, uh, th this is supposed to be a scissor, um, uh, how you make it and what the end result is. That makes it super clear for viewers, I'm going from this state to this state, and I want to make, I'm getting a video about how to make this over here. Over here, try to have custom thumbnails. I like the style of the thumbnails, um, but it helps to have a more consistent style. This is more pink, this is pink, uh, this is pink, and now you're switching over to white. Generally, I have to look at your competition, but white is overall not the best color for thumbnails. Just because it doesn't stand out much. Um, let me take a look at your competition. Sewing. Sewing a... How to sew a dress. Oh, it's pouring rain outside. It's pouring. How to make a dress. You see the dress here in the thumbnail. Do it yourself. Can you see that this conveys the message that I'm going to make something? It's not super clear over here, but here you see at least the end result. Here you see you make it, and here's the end result. Mm, but the text conveys over here that, that you're going to make the dress. Okay, it has light colors. So, um, personally, and this is a little bit white. If you want to continue, I think you should stick with your pink schedule. Oh, here. 
your pink schedule of these thumbnails over here because it stands out. Um, again, when I look at your thumbnails, this is blue on on pink it is a bit hard to read. Also, your font size is a little bit small. That makes it super hard to read on a mobile phone. And about 50 to 60% of viewers watch videos on their mobile phone. Risika, I hope that helps you. Thank you for submitting your uh, your channel. And uh, I, I think this can be a super fun channel. Enjoy what you're doing and enjoy what you what you make. Let me take a look at the next one. Yeah, this is a beautiful one. Straight arrow repair. I, I think this is brilliant. This is absolutely brilliant. Because you started a YouTube channel, probably not because you wanted to make YouTube with your you wanted to make money with your YouTube channel. You started this channel to support your existing business. And the way you did that is absolutely genius. Because you show people how to fix things and you might have the idea, okay, I'm giving away my secrets, but no. What you do is you show people what you do. You show your authority. You show to people that you know what you talk about. The brilliant thing of this is, and you you might exploit that a little that a little bit in your videos. <clears throat> the brilliant thing I think about this is when you show something to people, and it is a little bit too difficult, then they are really likely, very likely, to call you because it's too difficult for them. And if it's a little bit on the on the little bit more difficult side, then people are so lazy that they think, well, that dude knows what he's talking about. Let's give him a call. And that's why I, th I think this is brilliant. And your videos might not have gained thousands of views and you convert not very well, probably uh, uh, with these kinds of viewer numbers. Oh, you made a lot of videos. You made a lot of videos. But keep at it. It will come. It will come. Let me take a look at some of your videos. Okay, you start. Okay, the problem is you do an intro here. And that intro, I saw a couple of your videos already. That intro is the same for every single video. You ask people to go on a journey with uh, repairmen. I think you should treat this more as a how-to channel and you do that a little bit with your title already over here. Your content starts only here. 29 seconds in the video. Those first 29, well, we are 33 seconds in. I have I haven't got any single ounce of value already out your out your video. So I would prefer to start over here. Cut the parts out. You you give value here. Let me show you how to do that. I the, okay. No, really good, uh, no problem with that. But let me show you, I'm going to search for something. Cut that out in your edit. It's really easy to do. It doesn't give any value to viewers. Now you're getting value again. This is great. This is super content. Okay. 
Yeah, if you want to do a subscribe, indeed, uh, it helps to do that. You already gave you some, some information, so they are able to judge if you, they can subscribe to your channel. Um, and this is a non-intrusive way of asking for a subscribe. So uh, that's really good what you do here for you. I noticed that your footage is a little bit, um, it doesn't look sharp. It doesn't look 1080p footage. And I don't know what that is. Did you film it with a regular r regular video camera? Because let's say, I think most phones nowadays can shoot better video than this. And if you have the possibility, I get that this is on location and you probably show something that you do with your clients. But if you, it helps to do it in, in a better lit situation. Now the sun is out there, it's no problem. But I saw a video of you under your, uh, under a house. Can you show something in, in a studio or a well lit environment that you can explain something to people? Just to break up the the video a bit, um, over here. Again, it takes a while for you to get into the video and you will see viewers clicking away. Also here you go and this adds nothing to the viewer. You don't give value to viewers. You wait for something to someone to get something. It's really easy to cut that out. In this case, I have no problem that it's under the house and yeah, it, the, it's not well, it's not well lit. But if you want to explain something to people, you can do that on another place and you can do that with a B-roll, for example, uh, that is better lit. But I get that this is under house, so an sich that you are on this location, no problem with that. Okay. Let me take a look at your thumbnails. You repeat the title of your video in your thumbnails. There's absolutely no need for that. If you want to do, if you want to, if you have a title like this, then you don't need the text over here. I prepared a couple of, of thumbnails for you that might, that might give you some ideas what you could do with the text. I, I took your the liberty of taking this thumbnail over here and do something with text that might give you us more reason to click on your videos. Because how to uh, how to do corners with J Channel Mobile Home. Okay, that mobile home doesn't add anything. How to do corners with J Channel. Okay, that's what people come for. How can you stand out about uh, above the competition? You can do that, for example, with a text that appeals to people. For example, look out for your eyes. I had another text. Um, do this very carefully. Or if you cut corners, that's a joke, you'll regret it. Or 10 minutes is 10K saved <clears throat> of burning down your house when you do it the wrong way, for example. Uh, people don't know that, but they they want to re have want to have that resolved. One millimeter too wide, and you're screwed. Or this can damage your house. Just spitballing here. And when the the arrow is over here, it, it points people to that part of the video. But they they it intrigues people because it it, it doesn't reveal the whole thing. It doesn't reveal what is going to happen. And that's the tension that you, you set in your thumbnail. That's a reason for people to click because they want to know in what way can this damage my house. Thank you for submitting the channel. Thank you so much. Uh, I see one I see one problem with your channel. 
and that is returning viewers. So what my uh, advice would be, are there, you have a lot of specific topics, are there videos that can appeal to a broader audience um, just to change things up a little bit that viewers can watch in consecutive order? For example, if you do some general tutorial on how to cut wood or some general tutorials on how to screw in screws, for example, because if I've seen wood, I might be interested because there's a connection also there. I might be interested in the screw tutorial. I might be interested in yada, 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 yada. Because now when I'm looking at this video, how to save time with the carpenter's pencil, I'm not directly into this video. I know that is really hard because how to's are generally all over the place when it comes to topics. Nevertheless, I hope it helps you. That concludes this live stream. Thanks everybody for tuning in and I hope to see you in the next one. Next week already. Thank you for watching. Bye.